Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm honored. We have Richard Armstrong. He's one of the titans of copywriting and direct response marketing. He's one of the nation's leading freelance copywriters, specializing in publishing, membership, and fundraising. Richard is a two-time winner of the Capels Awards. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's the Oscars of Direct Mail. And he was voted the AWAI Copywriter of the Year in 2012. He's also the author of several books, including God Doesn't Shoot Craps, which is which is intriguing. You have to pick it up. Richard, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Jeremy. It's an honor to be here. What's one of the campaigns that didn't do well that you thought? Oh, well, now we have a very wide choice of things to talk about. Because, well, you know, one of the things about this business, and, and I think if there are young people who are listening to this, they should always remember this. We fail much more often than we succeed in this business. It's, uh, the analogy that I sometimes use is, is baseball. I mean, if, 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 you get, if you get a hit one out of every four times you come up to bat, you're a major league baseball player. If you get one out of every three times you come up to bat, you're probably just about the best person in the whole league. Yeah, and you're if you a Hall of Famer. Better yeah. than that, you're the best person in history. So you fail more often than you succeed, and that's very true in our business. I mean, you know, I'm if I do ten packages in a year, um, and two or three of them turn out to be successes, I've had a pretty good year. But that also means that I'm looking at seven of them that I failed. And that's hard to hear over and over again. You call the client. How did it do? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, it bummed. You hear that over and over and over again. And that, you know, that takes a toll on you because each one, you never intend to bomb. You always think that they're going to be huge successes. Right. And in many places, the client thinks it's going to be a huge success too. They're all excited about it. Everybody's excited about it. You get the results back. It bombed. And it's very hard to hear that over and over again. Um, so I'm just saying that to people out there who may be getting discouraged uh, who by, by lack of success, the success will come, and it doesn't take that many successes to have a successful career. If you have one or two a year, or if you have one really big one every now and then where everybody knows about it, that can make all the difference. Yeah. Now, having said that, to look at a particular one, there was one that I always come back to because it was so it was such a great opportunity for me and I blew it. I really I started out in the fundraising area and I really wanted to make a transition into magazine promotion because that's where the big money was and that's where all the really talented people were. And it was also a glamorous field to be in, to be selling, you know, Playboy and Vanity Fair and the New Yorker and everything. It was it was it was, you know, uh, the, the, the most glamorous area of the business. And so I always had this goal that I wanted to make the transition into that area. And one day I got an opportunity to work for Dick Benson. Now, Dick Benson, I don't know if you know that name, but he was the top consultant in the area of magazine circulation. He knew everybody. All, all those magazines that I just mentioned had him as their main direct mail consultant. There was nobody more tied in than him. So to get a winning package from him would have meant that I would have been instantly in that crowd. So it was the biggest opportunity I ever got in my life. And he hired me to write for one of his own publications because in addition to being a consultant, he also owned two of them. One of them was called the Berkeley Wellness Letter. It was a newsletter on health. And, uh, and the other one was called Health After 50 from Johns Hopkins. He made gazillions of dollars on this. I mean, he didn't even have to do the consulting if he didn't want to. It was a, the newsletters were enormously successful. How did he find you? He found me again because of that. Uh, I think basically because of that Sea Turtle Rescue Fund thing. It just uh, you know my name was out there in the in the trade publications of having won that big award and everything. So he found me that way, and he called me, and uh, he wanted me to hire me, and. Um, I wrote a package for the Berkeley Wellness Letter, and I decided to focus on Winston Churchill because Winston Churchill lived to be, I think, or almost 90 years old, around 89, 88, something like that. And he had the worst lifestyle, health style lifestyle, 
of anybody imaginable. He drank like a fifth of liquor a day. He smoked cigars like crazy. He stayed up all night and got a few hours of sleep. And here he lived so long, you know. So I thought, why don't we base the package on that? We had a picture of Winston Churchill out on the front of it. And it said, Winston Churchill, you know, drank every day, he smoked like this. He, he, he burned the candle at both ends, and yet he still lived to be 89. How did he pull it off? I thought, wow, that is a really great headline, a really great idea. It'll get people into the letter. It'll do beautifully. Now, Dick, when he read this, he loved it. And I mean, he loved it. And it. Dick Benson was a very undemonstrative person. He was the kind of person who, when he called you, he never said hello. He'd just start talking to you. And then when he was done, he'd stop. He'd never say goodbye. I mean, he was just a very flatline sort of individual. Uh, but he was gushing, absolutely gushing. And he called everybody he knew. This was before it mailed. He called everybody he knew, and he said, I've discovered the most amazing new copywriter. This guy is the next Bill Jamie. I want to read you some of his copy. So, so I mean, it was, it was amazing. It was like all my dreams had come true. Well, time goes by, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, however long it took. I got a call, not even from Dick. I got a call from one of his assistants. He said, Remember the Winston Churchill package you wrote for the for the wellness letter? I said, of course I remembered. He said, well, it bombed. <laughs> Click. <laughs> and know? they hung up? Yeah. And that was it. That was it. I never heard from him again. So it was the biggest opportunity that I ever had in my life. And I blew it. And when I, and I still to this day, I try to figure out, well, what, why exactly, what exactly went wrong there? Mm. I think... I just kind of got my eye off the ball by focusing on Winston Churchill and particularly by putting a big picture of him on the outer envelope. I think most people probably looked at that and thought that we're trying to sell history books, you know, or something like that, something to do with Winston Churchill. They probably never even read the headline, didn't realize that it had something to do with health and more to the point, didn't realize that it had something to do with their own health, which would have been the right way to approach it. So I just sort of, you know, I, in a sense, I took my eye off the ball. And, and I got too creative, too clever, too cute, um, too imaginative, instead of focusing on who the customer was, what the customer wanted, and what I could give to them. Right. Uh, I just got distracted from that, which is a mistake that is very, very common. And it's a hard mistake not to make. I mean, not, that's not the only time I've done it. In fact, if I look back on the major failures that I've had in my career, it's over and over again I've done the same thing. I've tried to get creative, clever, imaginative. And in the process, I got too far away from what I was really selling. Yeah. So um, I, I keep going back to that one, even though I've had, I could tell you about thousands of failures I've had over the years. That's the one that made the most difference to me because it had I had the chance to really attain one of my life's, one of my career's greatest goals. I mean, it was there right for me, and I lost it. Yeah. Uh, and I lost it by doing something kind of stupid. Yeah. It's those <laughs> game-winning shots that we play in our mind over and exactly. over and over. It's the Michael Jordan thing. I had the chance to win the game with the last shot, and I missed it. But as Michael Jordan will point out, and you've probably seen this quote before, he missed a lot of game-winning shots himself. Yeah. So, you know, I had other chances, and I eventually did get back into the magazine promotion business. And, uh, and so I eventually did attain that goal. And, and ironically, in retrospect, the magazine promotion business nowadays is nowhere still. Uh, for a lot of reasons, magazines in general are struggling and they just don't promote in the mail like they used to. So uh, the people who did specialize in that area, if they weren't able to adapt to the changing realities and the changing uh, nature of our business, uh, they're kind of screwed. And some of those people actually wound up retiring early because of it. <laughs> 